Welcome to Sydney. Yes, we've finally made it. Famed around the world for its famous harbour, the Sydney Opera House and the iconic Harbour Bridge. It's a bustling city that's full of food action. So the majestic harbour plays host to some of Australia's foremost leading restaurants and chefs. One such restaurant is Flying Fish. It's a hatted restaurant positioned in an old wharf building in Piedmont Bay. It's made famous by chef Peter Caravita. So the restaurant is now led by one of Australia's chef rising stars, Steve Seckel. So with amazing views, ambience to die for and a reputation for excellence, seems a perfect place to represent the Sydney food scene, doesn't it? Well, we've finally made it to Sydney. What better place than coming to an iconic Sydney restaurant like Flying Fish? We've got here the exec chef from Flying Fish, Steve Seckel. Nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you. Well, welcome to Food to Eat. Um, tell us about this awesome little establishment you've got here for Flying Fish. Um, so Flying Fish was built uh, and constructed off an old uh, Maritime War okay. um, back in 2004. Um, it's a heritage building, so the restaurant's been built around the bones of the heritage building. Okay. Um, and the kitchen's been laid out in three sort of distinct um, little areas, being a raw, raw bar, a main kitchen and a pastry kitchen, which has popped upstairs. Okay. Um, in 2004 it opened on Australia Day. Um, wow. to uh, a lot of uh, press and the media and, and being such a big fit out at the time um, yeah. by the owner Conditi. Yeah. Um, and uh, eight years later we're still kicking on and uh, the restaurant's evolving um, every day. Right, and how, how long have you been here with, with, with the company I suppose? With the company, uh, six years. I've, uh, I started as a chef de party. I moved down from the country uh, well, six years ago and I worked here for two, two years and then I, headed, I went overseas. Uh, did some time in London and in Botswana and Africa. Oh wow. And then came back and opened uh, Flying Fish Fiji uh, for the company. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, a bit of a flying fish, born and bred sort of chef. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then took over uh, as head chef uh, about two years ago and, and recently became executive chef. You know, the past 12 months I've been working solidly um, with my sort of seafood suppliers mm. to source uh, the best but some of the more unique species of fish um, to be able to make sure that flying fish does stay more sustainable into the future. We've just branched out into a small uh, family company um, called Chatham Island uh, Blue Cod, okay. uh, a small island off New Zealand, a small family, Maori family, who catch their uh, blue cod um, actually in pots that only go down for 20 minutes so there's no, wow. there's no damage on the fish, there's no long, long lines, all the fish come up live um, and they have a traceability on their boats so when we, when we receive the blue cod, they have the uh, the boat name, the name of the fisherman that caught it, the time they were caught, and it's actually mapped on the map where the where the blue cod's caught. So, so you can trace that completely right completely back, completely right right back and, and to what time it's caught, and we know how long the fish has been sort of um, killed for and, and, and uh, gutted. So it, it is amazing. Where does your passion come from? What is it? What is it about food that gets you in that kitchen every day, banging out 16 hours, 300 yeah. covers a night? Well, most people think I'm obsessed because I really don't. <laughs> I, uh, I've never thought about doing anything else. I, um, you know, I started cooking. I left school. On my, I was still 14. I started my apprenticeship on my 15th birthday. Wow. I've done a bit of work experience through school in that year nine. That I, I just, I loved the, the speed. I loved the, just the, just the general sense of belonging to a team. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of camaraderie in the kitchen. Um, you know, I, I don't think I could get up every day and just do a nine to five sort of job where I was just going in and sort of crunching the numbers and going yeah, home, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you get a real attachment to the food. It, you know, I've always said to the guys in the kitchen, it's like, a, a chef is like an artist, but we get to eat our food and we get to, it gets to touch more of our senses rather than, you know, a, yeah. an artist can paint, but then you, you only got the visual. That's right. You know, yeah. and the thought process behind and it. And we, we eat with everything, don't we? We, we do. Our eyes, our nose, our yeah. ears, the whole lot. So. Yeah. So, so cooking's one thing, and then the more your palate develops and the more you, you, you the more you're passionate about food, then when you eat in other places around the world, whether it be Spain yeah, or, yeah. or in London or, in, or in, in anywhere in Asia, the, the, the better your palate's developed. And I, I don't do much else. I cook, I eat, I, I talk about food, I, I live food. But I think Sydney diners tend to uh, like a bit more of a, a classical sort of style in, in certain restaurants. They, mm -hmm. know they like it, their comfort, knowing that they can come back to a restaurant that's been there for quite some time yes. and, and know that they're going to get you know a certain product. I mean, Sydney's a very you know, we've got the mass of the big harbour and, 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 the, and the beaches and Bondi mm -hmm. Beach being an iconic place. And, and very visual, isn't it? It is very visual. So, you know, restaurants in Sydney tend to uh, cook to the, a bit to the visuals of what's going on. So when you're designing your, your menu, you've just introduced a new menu here. What are the key elements that you look for when you're doing that? Does it come from a different place? Or do you have a really firm idea when you, when you start out? Uh, first it goes on the seasons. I mean, I couldn't wait. I, I don't... 
a lot of chefs will change their uh, menus right on the season. I wait. I waited about three or four weeks and we changed two days ago and Daylight Savings just here. I like to change the spring menu on Daylight Savings because I feel the minute you get that extra hour of sunshine in the afternoon, the menu can change completely. Um, sometimes we put an ingredient on the menu that we, none of us know anything about and then we learn about it and that's the best way to learn about it because you, you play with its textures, its flavours. Sometimes you, you bring it onto a new dish and it won't work with that dish. Yeah. Um, so then, you, you know, you, but you'll still be in love with that ingredient so you might find another spot, spot for it on the menu. Do you find your, your dishes, say from, okay, you've only just started your new menu two days ago, yeah. do, you, do you find in the next couple of weeks that those dishes will evolve? Hey, this, in the last 48 hours we've had three dishes change completely. <laughs> and the one thing that we do here is I, I don't, you know, I'm not a closed, closed book in terms of when, when ideas for the menu, so I write the menu, but every single chef from, from first year apprentice through to my head chef, um, is open for input and, mm -hmm. and and it's always taken on board and I, and I think that's important because you know one person can't have all the ideas in the world or, you know and yeah. there are going to be things where you know you, you could be wrong so and that's what they love about it you know so there's always there's always there's a lot of collaboration a lot of collaboration yeah. and a lot of room for creation well I think Steve thanks very much for Great. showing us around flying fish Pleasure. seeing your passion just sort of oozes out on camera so it's one thanks very much much thank you